you. Mm. I'd like to play for you guys a song now, if I may, uh, that has uh, a couple of Australian references in it. Now, I could have changed those references for an international audience, but I chose not to, because I'm a lazy person. <laughs> I think it would be much better to interrupt the song and explain it to you as we go. <laughs> then we're learning. I went to a party on the outskirts of Geelong. Geelong. <laughs> Geelong is a small town in Australia. Take it on board. <laughs> I went to a party on the outskirts of Geelong. I'm not one for parties, but my girl dragged me along. There she started talking to a sleazy looking guy. He had a bulge in his pants and evil in his eyes. <laughs> they began to talk about the new millennium. New millennium. It's not that new anymore. It's like eight, eight years ago. This is a pretty old song. I didn't change it. The lazy person. They began to talk about the new millennium. Then pretty soon I saw his hand was on her bum. She told him that his pointy tail was kind of cute. He turned and then he suavely asked her for a root. Root is an Australian term, a legitimate Australian term, rooting. It means when a man and a woman love each other very much, <laughs> they have really, really bad, quick, unsatisfying parking lot sex that often results yes. in a child that will be thrown in a dumpster. So, a couple of gentlemen up the back planning a root. I suspect later on this year. What's really funny about that is that, of course, Americans, I apologize that I keep looking at you like my token American guy, I don't want to pick on you, you're really nice, um, is that Americans' use of the word rooting is completely different. And you'll get uh, uh, lovely, good looking, clean cut men like this man here coming to Australia because Americans, to root for something means to barrack for it, means to support it. So Americans will come to Australia and root for entire football teams. <laughs> and that makes us laugh. <laughs> for us. I've seen the devil, and he's gotta be the slickest guy around. He wears so much gold jewelry when he moves, the stock market goes down. And now he's got my girl. And that makes me frown Shall I give Yeah, shall I well, They went to the parking lot to see his Hellmobile It was a red panel van with lots of chrome and steel It was covered with designs of swords and naked chicks The custom license plate said Studley 666 666 I've seen the devil, and his band has got a mattress in the back. He uses weird unearthly powers as an aphrodisiac. And now my girl's trapped inside his mobile love shack. B-52's red room, snowing those bands in the trunk. <laughs> well, I opened up those van doors with an almighty yell. Devil or no devil, I was gonna give him hell. Get behind me, Satan, was my one verbal attack. Satan got behind me and he pierced my anal track. <laughs> anal track. I've seen the devil. And once you get to know him, he's not bad. He's just misunderstood. And the best sex I've ever had. And now we're on West Formal terms. And I call him Brad. In short for Bradley. Brad. town in Australia, which I have done. <laughs> let's call the song the, it's, it's called Devil Got My Woman, but let's call the song the Devil Fucks Me In The Arse Song, because let's face it, that's what the fucking song is about. So, I'm playing the Devil Fucks Me In The Arse Song in a small town in Australia, and there's a guy up the front for the whole gig with a, with a pint looking at me, quite enjoying the show. He's an older fellow, he's a country gentleman, and he's sitting there just sort of looking at me, smiling, he's enjoying the show, that's fine. Then I get to what can only be described as the devil fucking me in the ass song. I play that, he looks at me, 
as I finish the song, and his expression changes, and he just goes, poof. <laughs> I want you to really think about what that guy was thinking at that particular moment. Imagine if he was walking, say, down the Royal Mile, and he saw a winged, horned beast fucking me in the arms. <laughs> Would he just walk by and go, hi, mate? <laughs> but that's small town thinking. That's small town mentality. And it's, I don't think it's just in Australia. Uh, I travel around a lot, and a lot of people tell me that that's pretty much small town thinking all over. Um, and I'm from a small town in Australia, but I don't get back there much because I spend a lot of time on the road. And it gets lonely on the road. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're shagging the devil. <laughs> Sometimes the only thing I get. <laughs> I don't know why that was funny, my pain. <laughs> Thank you though. Ouch. Um, <laughs> Sometimes it gets very lonely, and I'll tell you when I know I've been on the road for too long. I've been on the road for too long when I'm lying in a hotel room and I'm looking around for something, anything, to make a woman out of. <laughs> I'm trying to put a wig on a fridge, you know what I'm saying? And that's when I know. So often, that's when I miss my hometown, and so what I like to do is I like to sing this song because it's about where I'm from. And if I sing it to an international crowd, then I'm kind of sharing it with you guys. You get to know kind of where I'm from. And it goes like this. I miss the place where I grew up amongst the wheat and corn With simple country values and the fire crackling warm The local suicide rate was three times the national norm <laughs> In my hometown we never used to lock our doors, so we got robbed a lot <laughs> by miserable eight-year-olds who needed cash for pot. Just beer and marijuana are the only friends you've got in my hometown. The great Australian outback, there's no better place you'll find. Drag racing down Main Street after drinking till you're blind. And 17 years later, all those friends I left behind uh, Drag racing down Main Street after drinking till they're blind <laughs> or they're in jail. <laughs> the great Australian outback where a man is truly free unless he's homosexual or aboriginal. Drink <laughs> the old Miss Watson who just shoot the blacks and queers and stack them in her driveway. Oh, how the children cheer. <laughs> <laughs> the corner store, the family farm, where I spent half my life. The smile on Mr. Johnson's face as he beat up his wife. The lines of pregnant teens waiting for doll checks to arrive. Oh yeah, that's my hometown. That's my 